So hello. Welcome to Marinello Ferrari Egham. And there's only one reason that we're in this car today, because these guys have organized an entire fleet of very special limited edition Ferraris, all in yellow for us to share with you today. Starting with none other than the remarkably iconic Ferrari 16M. Now only 499 of these cars were ever made. And the 16, the significance of 16, is that it was developed and manufactured in order to celebrate Ferrari's 16th constructor championship. M actually stands for manufacture. So that's what that means and that's what that stands for. In effect, this is a flat plane crank, naturally aspirated V8. Uh, it's just over 500 horsepower. But if you're familiar with the Scuderia, this is basically that platform with added rigidity and strengthening put in through the chassis with the roof removed. Uh, and the whole idea of this is to turn that Scuderia experience up to 11. One of the more remarkable stats about this car is that even though the Scuderia upon which this is pretty much based was all about less weight, more power. Now, one remarkable stat about this car is that despite the fact that they've removed the roof, which has required Ferrari to add in extra strengthening in the chassis so that it maintains its structural rigidity, it is in fact 80 kilograms lighter how, I, I don't know how they've done that. Normally when you add in strengthening on the removable roof cars, they just generally get heavier. But to be able to make this 80 kilograms lighter than Scuderia is very interesting indeed. Now the significance of this platform starting from Scuderia is that this is one of the cars which genuinely had input from none other than Michael Schumacher himself. And from this car onwards has set the benchmark for why Ferraris are so good at driving on, quote, bumpy roads, because Michael Schumacher had his input in developing what is now known as bumpy road mode. More specifically, he put the suggestion forward to Ferrari to independently control the suspension and dampers from the throttle and drivetrain modes, which is why on this car, you, we have the Manatino. So right here, we have the switch. You can put them from sport to race, CT off, and then you're pretty much on your own. That's a, then a 503 horsepower, very posh go-kart. Okay, while we're here, uh, the, the owner, and by the way, I think it's probably a good opportunity for me to say thank you very much for allowing us to film your remarkable collection of beautiful yellow Ferraris. Hopefully uh, we'll be hearing more from you soon because we need to get out and drive with these things. But speaking of driving, um, we just so happen to have the keys in this one. Let's, let's have a look at the mileage on this. Just over 700 miles in this. Wow practically box fresh. If I had a 16M, it would be just over 70,000 miles. <laughs> Honestly, this is one of the most visceral driving experiences. Oh, wow, what a thing. This takes me right back. Um, very, very early subscribers of the channel may remember uh, that uh, I once owned a Scuderia and uh, sadly introduced it to the undergrowth of our great British countryside. Uh, so it has bittersweet memories but mostly sweet and being back in this one I say back in it smelling the Alcantara yeah, it brings back happy amazing thoughts it's just a very very special car and again you know they're not going to be making any NA, v 8 anymore so special place in history this thing and that transitions us quite nicely onto the Speciali you see from here from 16M and Scuderia that platform of Manatino, independently controlling drivetrain from suspension, made its way all the way down that line to the very end at something very special, which we shall share with you shortly. And now here is a car that is particularly close to my heart. Early subscribers of the channel may recall that we had a uh, 458 Speciali on here. And one of the reasons that the engine response in this was so impressive, not only did it have 600 naturally aspirated horsepower, but it had a 14 to one compression ratio, which even all the way down that line, this thing still stands above the rest in terms of driving theater and engagement. Together with that twin clutch box, high revving, naturally aspirated engine, very high compression ratio, the response of it was sublime. Now, early subscribers of the channel may remember that we had a 458 Speciali on the channel. I'm quite 
um, open, but it's one of the cars that I miss the most, namely because of the memories which I forged in that car. My best man drove it to my wedding. We flew it out to uh, Dubai with Emirates in order to explore the region during the winter, and it was just a phenomenal car. And if I had the opportunity again, one day when I'm looking to build a more long-term collection, a 458 Speciale is definitely gonna make it back to the bunker or the JWW garage once again. Now then, similar really in ethos to the 16M, 458 Speciale Aperta, which basically means the roof comes off. And exactly like the 16M, these were made in very limited numbers of just 499. So, this is all about taking this platform, everything that I've just mentioned, and celebrating it up to 11 by removing the roof. Now actually, while it's fantastic to take the roof off this car, my favorite feature is the ability to keep the roof on and just drop the rear window here. The sound that you get off the exhaust, the induction noise, it just opens up this portal of resonance to one of Ferrari's best ever V8 engines. There's not a great deal more to add really, other than it looks phenomenal. And with the roof off, when you dive inside it, allow all of that light to cascade inside the interior. What a wonderful thing. Now, one thing I will say, um, I was very fortunate. Um, my good friend, uh, Jordan, out in Vancouver, uh, allowed me the pleasure of uh, basically living with his 458 Speciale for a few days. And at that time, being quite familiar with this standard Speciale, I was actually quite surprised that there is subtle differences in the way the car drives and the way the car feels. There is a little bit more weight uh, in this car because they have had to uh, add uh, more structural rigidity and this is the kind of attention you get when you're in and amongst this massive sort of bees hive of iridescent yellow Ferraris. Now then, we are transitioning genres, platforms. This is, this is probably, arguably, the biggest evolution in recent Ferrari times. The reason being is this is now a turbocharged engine. So all of the cars we're about to show you are all limited edition, special edition. But this at the time when it launched, its biggest problem was that. The 458 Speciale was so good. I mean, I can't remember not reading a review on that car where it didn't get five stars. And even if it didn't, it probably didn't get five stars because it was just too loud or too engaging or too something. When they went turbocharged on paper, all of the stats went crazy. So, just like the uh, 458 Speciale was an evolution of the 458 Italia, this is an evolution of the 488. And this is the first time that the V8 pushed through past 700 horsepower. I think these were about 710 horsepower. So ballistic speed, but there was something about them that when they first launched, everyone looked backwards towards the Speciale because they're never gonna make a naturally aspirated V8 again. Certainly not in a dare I say, accessible car. If they do, it'll be in something incredibly special indeed. So this is when things sort of downsized a bit, the revs aren't quite as high, and the whole experience was muted just a notch. That is until you press the throttle pedal. This thing is diaphragm bending in terms of acceleration. It is berserk. It feels like you're short shifting in comparison to the 458 Speciale. The way that this thing goes through the gears is outstanding. One thing I would love to do, and if the wonderful gentleman who was uh, kind enough to invite us down to film his entire collection of very special yellow cars would like, wouldn't it be great to back to back a 488 Pista and a 458 Speciale and just see, really, can that extra amount of torque and horsepower and just feeling of acceleration make up for perhaps where it lacks a little bit in theater and sound. Who knows, but I'd love to put them back to back. Now then, interestingly, the transition from there to here um, is the first time that Ferrari made a limited edition Aperta that wasn't limited edition. <laughs> When I, when I say that, they never put a specific production number on the 488 Pista Spider. And interestingly, they called it a Spider, not an Aperta, despite the fact that the 458 Speciale was an Aperta. Nevertheless, same ethos, taking the Pista experience, removing the roof, cranking it up to 11. Now this is also specced in a triple layer yellow, pings the contours. I mean, the sculpture on this is outstanding. One unique feature, which is a, uh, 
Atelier Optional Extra is the hand-painted Cavallino shields on the side of the car. Now, the significance of these is they're actually about 50% larger than the more conventional shield, which would you know, be an actual badge applied on the panel. The other significant feature is when you spec this, not only does somebody hand paint it on the side of the car, the actual shape of this wing here has to change because a standard wing would have an indentation, a recess as to where the conventional badge would go. But on here, the shield needs to be smooth and large, it's really, really big. So this is actually a fundamentally different panel to that of a normal scooter rear shield. And it's big, it really pops, really stands out. So just if you're wondering, 0 to 60, around about 2.8 seconds, not dissimilar to the piece de coupe. Uh, just a ballistic torque monster, 710 horsepower, delightfully cool. Also, the way that Ferrari have evolved the styling and the aero package on these cars as you work our way up towards their more recent creations. I wouldn't go so far as to say it makes the Speciali look a bit flat, but the contours on this are phenomenal. Speaking of contours, we've sort of done this in a weird way. Uh, these are all V8s, so we've put the V12 at the end. Uh, this no, needs no introduction. This is a Ferrari F12 TDF, uh, short for Tour de France. Uh, this is a very special version of that car. Uh, they were limited to just 799 cars. By the way, all of these are right-hand drive, which makes that 16M really rare. Uh, I think 10% of them were made available as right-hand drive cars. And as we mentioned, there's only 499 of them, so super rare. This car, um, while the exterior is fantastic, you'll notice the blue carbon here. If the camera is doing its job properly, you might not actually. It's quite hard to spot in the uh, overcast weather that we've got right now. Uh, we have this iridescent contrasting blue stripe that runs the full length of the car and even the rear diffuser and the F1 inspired rain slash fog light. This is all in blue carbon fiber as is all of this in here. It's just extras after extras. However, where this really gets interesting of this one of 799 car is the interior. Just behold that space. It's just a sea of blue carbon. Now this has gone through what is known as the atelier, which you can think of as uh, creating options for the client which aren't on the options list. They're available, but you have to sort of dream them up, ask the brand if they could interpret your idea into reality and out comes something that looks very special like this. Now I want to point out some of the more unique features. So take, for example, around the uh, also matte blue carbon fiber uh, drive select stalk on the central console there. The launch auto and reverse buttons are surrounded by a beautiful yellow circle. As standard, they are red. It's a very small detail, but it all ties it in wonderfully. Everything as well, all of this, this is all satin blue exposed carbon. Look at it, satin blue exposed carbon. It just makes getting in there such a special experience. And I particularly love the attention to detail of the same painted stripe on the outside of the car has been finished around the exit of the air vents and a stripe on the steering wheel here. Everywhere you look, even the contrast stitching and the stripe in the central seats has been matched to the exterior stripe on the car. High revving, almost 9,000 RPM, naturally aspirated V12. Twin clutch gearbox, 771 naturally aspirated V12 horsepower, all driven through the rear wheels alone. Up until the SF90, which recently launched, this was second only to the LaFerrari in terms of lap times around Ferrari's very own Fiorano race circuit. So despite the fact that it's based on an F12, they took this thing to a completely different level. It was the first uh, sports car that they made with rear wheel steering. One of the reasons that they introduced that was they put 275 section front tires on this car. Front tires, 275. So the front end turning was so aggressive that they had to keep the rear end check by introducing rear wheel steer. So the thing is really, really special in itself. And then you apply all of the Atelier spec on it. Woo! Different ball game different ball game. Now then, the main reason we're here is because of these cars outside. However, we can't come here and not show you 
what's inside. Oh look, one more very tasty yellow thing. However, come and check this out. Behold, so this is one hell of a showroom. So uh, this has actually just been recently updated, fully refurbished as part of Ferrari's latest CI, which is corporate identity. And they just so happen to have this triple layer red LaFerrari on this incredible plinth here. Now this car, I believe, has delivery mileage on it. It's also box fresh, still on charge. The bags that come with the car, designed to match the car, are still in their bubble wrap. And just check out the color. Nuvo Rosso F1 2007. This is the same paint that was on Kimi Raikkonen's 2007 Formula One car. It's probably one of the best spec LaFerrari's I've ever seen. It's also just so happens to be for sale. Anyone fancies it? Take it from me. The camera's probably not doing it justice. It looks incredible, but check it out. Look at this as well. If you were following the channel over the last few weeks, you may remember that we not only filmed, but drove the big five Ferraris, of which we practically have the group right here. So it's really big, you know, from the road, it doesn't look as big as it is, but when you get in here, it goes really far back. The quality of cars is outstanding. Now come and check out this lounge. In terms of a place to wait while you're about to spec or think about specking your car, check out this lounge, it is gorgeous. And all of this forms part of the latest Ferrari customer experience. This is what we want to be doing again. We haven't been on a road trip in a long time. The last time we took the TDF on a road trip was on the Targa Florio. Phenomenal, we went out to Sicily. We even drove across the width of Sicily to get to Mount Etna and drive the TDF up what is effectively an active volcano. And maybe, who knows, one day we might be able to do the millimilia support in that car. But all of this is basically to enhance your Ferrari experience. And I have to say, they've really upped their game because coming in here feels like they've taken the brand and elevated it to 11. All right, check this out. This is also the new atelier room where all of your dreams come true. Oh, 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 look at this. So all of the options that you just saw on the F12 TDF out there and a lot of them on the other cars were created in a room similar to this. The chances are actually on that TDF, client would have flown out to the factory and picked some of the stuff which never makes it to rooms like this. However, these rooms have evolved a lot. I mean, over the years, I've just seen these evolve and grow and all of the options take place. Check out the seats on the SF90. Look at those. So this is a, what I would class as now the more traditional carbon backed racing seat that comes in Ferraris. And this, this shape here uh, basically started out with the Scuderia. Look how far it's evolved. Look at the sculpture on that. It's Absolutely, insanely beautiful. I would like one of these stuck to the base of an office chair. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. That's, oh, it's so supportive. Do you know seats, you know like shoes maketh the man? Seat maketh the car. Look at that. You know that is destined for a, something really, really fast. Not that the Roma comfort seat isn't, but it, it, it suggests a certain vibe and ethos of a car, no? Look at the difference, Grand Tourer, racetrack. Can we talk about kid in a sweet shop? Can you imagine coming here? It's almost daunting. You sit down, you've got your car in mind. At this point, you've, you've placed your deposit months ago, and now you've got to sit down and it all takes place on here. It's dealer, client, lots of coffee, looking at that screen, picking stitches and paints and taking these, these samples here, taking these paint samples. You'll take one of these off of the uh, rack like that and then you'll play with it under light and then you'll go outside. Oh, what's it look like in actual sunlight? Oh, and then we'll come back in a few weeks time when it's bright sunlight or when it's overcast just to make sure that your spec is absolutely spot on. And then eventually what happens is you then go into this this sort of state of limbo flux where your order is submitted, you've got that PDF, that printout of your dream car and you wait and you wait and you wait. And then this status comes along all of a sudden called Red 10. Now I don't know why they call it Red 10 and any Ferrari dealers who are watching this, please leave comments below. But when your uh, specification goes to Red 10, that means it's, 
it's locked in and you can't change it. And that's when things start to go really quickly. And then what happens a few weeks after that is you then get photographs of your chassis and of your body shell on the production line being sprayed from bare metal all the way through spray process. And then at the very last moment, you'll get a photograph, probably a, a week or two before your car lands at the dealership of it rolling in its finished state off the production line. It is a magical experience. And this is where it all starts. And honestly, these are small, small samples of what is possible from this brand. And these drawers, these are not for pencils. Let's just check out a random one. What's going on? Yes, here we are. Uh, what color would you like your carpet, sir? Uh, Kermit green, yellow, theme of the day. Perhaps you'd like some silver carbon fiber, sir. So when you start to dig down, orange leather, I mean, you could create anything you like. You should smell this drawer. I wish we had smell of vision It smells incredible. What's down here? <gasps> More hides, more Alcantara. Paints yellow, that wasn't planned, genuinely. Yellow swatches in there. And the list goes on and on and on. Ooh, that green's nice, look at that. Look at that, whoa! What color's that? Verde GB23. Don't know what that is, that's probably a customer's bespoke request because often they will have a specific name for it. Look at this. I wonder if, will this? Steering wheel. Just imagine that. Comments below. How would you spec your Ferrari? Yellow? And what about luggage? Would you like to match your luggage with your car, sir? Now this might seem somewhat of an excessive optional extra. However, um, such is the nature of the limited space in some of these supercars. Take the trunk space of the SF90. Minimal to say the least. So you could go and get a squashy bag and just stick it in there. However, the shapes of these aren't here just because they look nice. The shapes of these are optimized for specific vehicles in the Ferrari range. So if you want to make the most of sometimes the limited space there is available, why not literally maximize every nook and cranny by buying a set which is designed to make the most of it all. It's cool. Also, can you imagine that in yellow Alcantara, <laughs> whatever you want. Ah, what a wonder cave. Massive, massive thank you to the guys at Marinello Ferrari Airgum and an equally massive thank you to the owner of this incredible collection of special edition yellow Ferraris. Let me know in the comments below what more you would like to see on this channel from the wonderful world of Ferrari. As always, thank you so much for watching. We shall see you next time. Ciao.